Hello everybody, in today's JavaScript tutorial you're going to learn a better way to add event listeners to your HTML events. HTML events are things like on click or on mouse over, on mouse out. There's a whole giant list of form events and now HTML5 introduces things like drag events and events for the audio and video tag for when videos and audio are playing and things like that. And a lot of people know how to add event listeners to their HTML tags, or rather add event attributes to their HTML tags. But this video will show you a better way to do that. We'll use JavaScript. Okay, first, before we get started, let's check out the featured dorky facts about this add event listener method of setting up your event handling on your HTML pages. Now, the first fact is it keeps your HTML slimmer by completely separating the script part and event handling and even applying the event attribute to the tag it keeps that separate from the actual HTML in in very much the same way that CSS keeps your styling separate so we'll show you how to keep your scripting completely separate now add event listener method is the optimum way to add event listeners to HTML elements in the DOM the document object model as described by the W3C it works on any DOM element, not just HTML elements, and it allows adding more than one handler for a particular event. And it also has finer tuned control over the phase when the listener becomes activated. Before we show you how to do it the new way, it's only appropriate that we show you the old ways that you're used to doing it. In case maybe you use that method, you might want to drop that method for a, a better method, a more recommended method by the people who create these methods. Now the first and simplest way to do it, let's see, let's create a button element. So let's give the button an ID that's equal to the value of my BTN. Let's close that tag off. And as the value will say my BT, my button. So if we press F12, that gives us this in the browser. And you'll notice that nothing at all happens when I click it, put my mouse over it or anything like that, except for the the visual change on the you know how it lights up blue but nothing else happens there's no script that's executing alright so one of the old ways and the easiest way was to just go straight into the tag and say on click so you can take the on click event or any of these other events that you can place on it let's say on click is equal to let's just put a quick piece of javascript in here an alert and we'll put between single quotes hello world now if I run that in the browser you'll see when I click the button script runs JavaScript and I could make it do anything I wanted to do okay so this what you see here is old way number one you'll also see it written out sometimes like this it'll say JavaScript colon and then the JavaScript functionality that you want to happen but you don't even need that JavaScript colon part but anyways this is the old way to do it and there's also another way to do it where you can remove this on click here add the click event through JavaScript so the first part is window dot on load equals add listeners so we need a function called add listeners so let's write that right now add listeners open curly brace go down a couple of lines and close the curly brace off you gotta make sure we have open close parentheses there so when the page load when the DOM is ready or when the window on load function fires off here it's gonna execute a function called add listeners that's going to happen right here you see function add listeners now what I'm showing you right here is old way number two this isn't the new way yet but this is leading up to the new way to do it okay so this is another old way that you'll see people doing it they will say document dot get element by ID and then they'll put the ID name of the element there between single quotes or double quotes we can grab it right there and put it in and then dot on click they're accessing the on click property for that element in the page and that property is equal to a function open close parentheses open and close curly brace and in between here is where you can put whatever JavaScript that you want to occur for that on click function and I'll just type in alert now I'll press control s and run that in the browser and now you can see that I tied the event to the button without having to go into the HTML and add the on click attribute here of on click you see 
we did it through JavaScript but still this isn't the newer functionality where you're using the add event listener okay so that's that's like the old method number two now we're gonna show you the new method of doing it which uses a method called add event listeners okay now here all I have to do is backtrack just a little bit because I'm not going to use that method we're gonna use the actual add event listener method which is the more recommended method by the people at W3C and everybody who's a big giant dork online so just as before when the window is loaded when the page is loaded into the browser fully this function called add listeners is going to fire off and it's going to add the event listeners for all the elements on the page that you want to add listeners for okay so the first thing you'll do is you'll start off with an if and else condition statement and that condition will read if the window dot add event listener method is available for use then we're going to execute code right here in this line else if window dot attach event is the only available method for attaching an event for any browsers that are older than Internet Explorer 9 so for any versions of Internet Explorer that are before Internet Explorer 9 so previous to Internet Explorer 9 you'll have to use this other attach event method so that's why I included it but for any browsers uh, Firefox, Chrome, Safari, all the new versions of the, all the new browsers even Internet Explorer 9 will use the add event listener method and you wouldn't have to use two different methods but if you want to script this to work for any browsers like Internet Explorer 8 or any before that you'll have to put this else if condition statement but if you didn't want to worry about those you could just have that right there actually you wouldn't need even need that if condition either because the add event listener method would work for all browsers but for the meantime we're gonna leave that in because a lot of people still use Internet Explorer 8 okay we're gonna use the document dot get element by ID method again single quote single quote close the parentheses and break that statement with a semicolon and that was my button instead of adding the dot on click property like we did before like that we're going to dot add event listener and you can see that there's three parameters or arguments that you can supply to this method the first is type and that is the type of event you want to listen for like on click on mouse over on mouse out things like that that's your type the listener is going to be the name of the function that you want to fire off the function that you're going to write that's going to execute when that event is triggered and use capture it indicates whether the user wishes to initiate capture or not and that is usually set to false so let's click that and then we'll add our three see first it's asking for type so between double quotes here I'm gonna type in click I want the click event then I'm gonna put a comma and now it's asking me for a listener you can see there I'm gonna call it btn1 funk short for button one function and then I'm gonna put another comma and you can see it's asking me for the use capture value now you can set that to true or false now all we have to do is go under the else condition here and let's type in a comment say add your functions and this is where we're gonna add our functions I'll pop this one in it's called button one function you can see it matches that name here and what this is gonna do is just alert it's gonna fire off a JavaScript alert to show you what the name of the button is and I also showed you guys how to access the object using this syntax so you can use this syntax to access the object and you'll see that the name what's the name of that button my btn it'll say my btn colon mouse click make script run okay so let's press control s F12 to run it in the browser click it so you see my button colon mouse click make script run so you see that this dot ID my button ID is my BTN and that's how we got that value to show up when we click that of my BTN you see by accessing the this syntax because this function knows what object initiated it or triggered it to execute because it's tied to it here through this add event listener method. Now if it happens to be a user who's visiting your application using Internet Explorer 8, anything before Internet Explorer 9, you're going to want to run this code right here. Let's change that to my BTN. There. So use document.getElementById 
mybtn, the attach event method instead of the add event listener method. And that only gets two parameters. And you can see here that you have to target on click instead of just click if you're going to use attach event. And you can fire off that same function that here that we wrote. Okay? So let's try that now. Yep, everything's good. Now adding more is very simple. So say I had another button right here next to this button that was my BTN2. I could just go right up here, copy this line, control C, control V, my BTN2, my BTN function 2, change that name, and then we'll make a new function. Just grab that function, call it BTN2 function, and we're going to change this one from click to, let's try mouse over. So when we hover over it, and this one will say hover event F12 so you can see when I hovered over it I didn't even click the hover event fired off and everything triggered my JavaScript run this one I have to actually click to fire off that event now if I want to go in here and add to the original button that we had another event listener for the mouse over or the mouse out when the mouse leaves the button and all of the other events and I'll show you all of the events real quick but pretty much that's it it's just a more optimum method of adding event listeners to your HTML and you can see that it really slims down the HTML you don't have all that on click and JavaScript going on down in the HTML so it's kinda like what CSS does by separating the style and presentation from the HTML markup this separates the scripting, the JavaScript, from and the event handling from the HTML markup. So it's a really helpful thing. Here, and let's make this say mouse over, which is the hover mode, instead of the mouse click event for that button to function, because that is set for a mouse over event. Now, if you go to developphp.com, you'll notice I'm working on an HTML5 training course. I'm going to try and get as complete as possible a training course for HTML5, which I'm in the middle of writing, and I'm very busy. I do a lot of different types of things, so it'll take me a little while to get it all assembled, but you'll see I have a good bit going on so far. And if you click on any one, you'll notice that on the left, all of the other corresponding lessons for the HTML5 course are on the left here and you can click on those directly. But the one I want to target right now is HTML5 events. You click on that one and you can go down on that page and see all of the events. You see on clickers right there. We used that one already. But look at all the other ones you have at your disposal. And you can see if I put new HTML5 event attribute next to it, you'll know that's new for HTML5 and it won't be ready until 2014 for full standardized use but you can make use of all of these other ones that don't have green next to them today you can make use of those in all browsers but as I mentioned in the HTML5 introduction that 2014 is the official release date that W3C is claiming at this point they might push that forward a little bit but we have to wait until 2014 before we can expect this to be a standard that's cross-browser compliant. Alright, so there's your HTML5 attributes list and you know how to use the add event listener method to add event listening to your HTML elements. And this script will be available at developphp.com and I'll just put a link to it right in the description of the video underneath the video there. If you want to happen to copy and paste the script that we built during this tutorial.